Hello guys. In this video we are going to do some investigations about uh, cool, laboratory, cool laboratory liquid ultra thermal paste. Sorry for the mispronunciation uh, or what was that. Um, I applied uh, that thing on this uh, CPU about one year ago and at first it was awesome. But then uh, this is my father's laptop. Uh, when I was at his place I did some more intensive work on the laptop and uh, it just shut down on me and it wouldn't want to start again. First I thought okay the motherboard is dead or something so yeah it is what it is. But then uh, after it cooled down actually it uh, started again. That was a hint that something is wrong. Let me just uh, show you a bit of... Uh, of the issue here. Let's start uh, CPU Z and maybe hardware monitor. So this thing as you can see at the moment uh, the core is at 35 degrees which is awesome. Just keep in mind uh, this laptop is already open and it can draw air uh, through this area really easy. Normally it cannot do that. So let's start uh, stressing this CPU a bit. As you can see, already above 80 degrees in a few seconds. 83, 84 degrees and rising. This I don't think should happen. And uh, a laptop of one of my friends died. I didn't know the uh, knew the conditions uh, in which it died but it, he, give, he gave it to me to use parts from it and whatever and uh, when I got to the CPU uh, liquid uh, ultra from cool laboratory was completely dried up and looking really 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 bad so I'm suspecting uh, that uh, also that laptop died because of that thermal paste as you can see we are almost at 90 degrees so this is not good at all the CPU you can see it's I don't know if this is a problem with Windows reporting it says it's uh, lower than its max which should be 2.9 it's only 2.7 but uh, let's see CPU Z yeah, yeah. CPU Z says 2.9 so this is a problem with Windows uh, reporting the wrong frequency but the temps at this point are 90 degrees. So this is for me way too much and now like I said before it can draw air as much as it wants. Normally you have a case here and that would uh, really rise the temperatures up. So I'm going to open it up and see I don't know the condition of the of the thermal paste basically. And now I think it just thermal throttled. Yes. You can see it went down to 2 gigahertz. So it realized uh, by itself it's way too hot and it reduced the speed. This is not normal, it shouldn't be doing this. So yeah, let's open it up more and see what we get. And now guys, for the big reveal, what will we find in here? If I actually remember how to take this bloody thing out I didn't uh, open up quite everything that I should have I'm trying to do this uh, a bit easier and this looks nasty do you see? I wonder let me get, get a piece of uh, of toilet paper to see if this is still uh, uh, let me zoom out because I don't want to be over the laptop when I try to clean this thing because as you might remember this is actually conductive sorry about that my wife just walked in while I was filming uh, let's get back to this. This is 100% dry. 
this is not. The one on the chipset is still a bit uh, uh, wet, not really wet, I don't think that is the correct term, but the one on the CPU is 100% dry. So, yeah, for me guys, Cool Laboratory Liquid Ultra is a no-go from this point on. The biggest problem is, let me try with some alcohol, but I have the, the feeling that I will not be able to remove this thing easily. Okay, alcohol. Just as I suspected. And I have a feeling that the same thing will happen on the CPU. And most likely on the chipset. Yeah. Okay. This attaches itself to anything. Yep. I will not be using this thing ever again for sure. It seems to be good at first, but in the end it sucks. Probably because of the heat it dries up, but man, things heat up. That's the point of the, of the thermal paste. So, I don't know. I'm going to search for the sponge that they supplied. Let me try with that. Okay, back. This is the removal sponge that they supplied. And now I'm thinking, if they supply this, they know that this thing dries up. Even their sponge cannot remove this effectively. Next is sandpaper. Let me try here where it was not completely dried up. Yeah, if it's not 100% dried up, their sponge will remove it in the end, as you can see, but not all of it. Some marks remain, but we don't care about the marks, we want that stuff gone. And of course this uh, dust that it creates is conductive, because it is conductive. So this will suck, cleaning the CPU and chipset will suck, but yeah, I'll be back when I finish. As you can see, this thing is impossible to clean with the included, uh, I don't know, it's not a sponge, it's a mesh of some kind of textile wires. <sighs> not good at all. Cleaned these things as best as I could. This is what I could do on the heatsink itself. You can still see marks, probably they are deep inside the copper. And of course this is all scratched now, so it's worse than when it was new. I should polish this, but I don't have time for that. Anyway, I'm going to put the old trusty MX2. And uh, hopefully this will be okay. But uh, yeah, for me, this is clearly the end of using uh, that uh, cool laboratory stuff. I really, really honestly liked it in the first place. It seems to give really good results when you first apply it, but it seems over time it is absolute crap. On the chipset where it was not dried up, because the chipset doesn't heat up as much as the CPU, it was still decent. But uh, you put this stuff on your CPU, CPU which heats up a lot. So, I don't know, maybe on desktop CPUs it's still good, but on laptop ones, no, don't use it. So, let me just put this thing back on, tighten everything up and uh, do some tests. Start it up the laptop. And until now, the fan did not even start it to turn. Before it was already turning like crazy. <sighs> yeah. Let's see some temperatures. Some uh, C 
CPU usage 2.7 of course that means uh, Windows doesn't report correctly this but who cares 47 degrees at the moment fan just started turning you can see the correct speed here and let's stress the CPU and see what ha happens no, normally this isn't quite correct because the thermal paste needs to set for a little bit before it has its best uh, properties but for what we need it should be enough 2.9 as you can see here Windows still says 2.7 or something like that but the temperatures are way 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 incredibly lower we were at 80 degrees at this point before so yeah sadly i really liked that uh, cool laboratory liquid ultra but it seems that over time it is crap so if you plan on opening up your pc and replacing it every few months then it's good it's okay but i don't do that and for a laptop to open it up that often often you will strip the threads on the inserts or the screws themselves so yeah, I have to say, uh, do not use this stuff. I'm really sad about this because I really liked it, but don't, don't use it. I will put a, an expressive title for this video, although I don't usually do that. Because I don't like to bash products like this, like this but it is bad. Honestly, it's not allowed for a thermal paste to dry up that quickly and uh, and that badly and be that hard to remove. I had to use uh, sandpaper to remove it from the heatsink. And it's copper. I I would would have understood if uh, I used the wrong heatsink and put the thermal paste on a, on an alu uh, aluminum heatsink. You are not allowed to do that, but I used the uh, copper like they say so as you can see we are not getting over uh, 60 degrees not 80 90 degrees like it was before no thermal throttling no nothing cpu is at maximum of course windows still doesn't report correctly but not an issue here we can see it clearly here still going strong so, yeah, that kind of sucks. Uh, let me just give you a, a zoom a bit on the, on the temperatures. They are quite stable. And this is uh, Arctic Silver MX2. It's not the greatest or the best, but still does the job really well. So, what can I say? Thanks for watching. Like, dislike, comment, subscribe and see you again next time. Bye.